OpenAI just released their ChatGPT and Whisper APIs. Not only that, but they've also been able to achieve 90% cost reduction since December. And they're now passing those savings onto their API users. So what exactly does that mean? Well, basically, it has got a whole lot easier and a lot cheaper for companies to integrate ChatGPT into their mobile apps and websites. So we're gonna start seeing a lot more ChatGPT. Already, there are several companies that have started integrating this technology into their mobile apps and websites. And we'll look at more of those companies here in a second, exactly how they're using this technology. We'll also dive deeper into the API how, and how you can use it, as well as a few business opportunities. But first, I just wanna go ahead and show you exactly how cheap this has become. So we're on the pricing page here, and to use their chat API, it costs a fifth of one US cent to generate 1,000 tokens. And 1,000 tokens will get you roughly 750 words. So let's just go ahead and multiply that by five. So for one US penny, for one cent, you can generate around 3,750 words. And if your articles or blog posts are roughly 1,000 words each, that means for one penny, you can generate three to four blog posts, which is absolutely insane. That is incredibly cheap. So let's go ahead and check out a few of the early adopters of this API and how they're using it in their business. And you'll quickly see that this technology can be implemented in just about any type of business out there to enhance whatever your product is. This first one is Snapchat. I'm sure you've all heard of Snapchat before. And what Snapchat has done is they've created a customizable chatbot that offers recommendations and can even write a haiku for friends in seconds. And as you can see in this demo right here, the user says, hi there. And then it responds, hey, what can I help you with? And then the user says, can you write me a haiku about my cheese obsessed friend, Lucas? And Snapchat replies, Lucas's love for cheese, Gouda, Brie, and Camembert melts hearts, not just cheese. All right, so that's kind of cute. Let's go and check out this next business that's using ChatGPT. This one is Quizlet. If you haven't heard of Quizlet before, it's essentially just a study tool online that helps people prepare for tests and quizzes. And what they've done with ChatGPT if they, is they've created a sort of chatbot that helps you study for tests. So let's go and check out this demo. As you can tell, Quizlet has now become essentially a personal tutor that can help you study and learn about whatever you would like to study. So it's asking the student, what would you like to be quizzed on? The student replies, intro to biology. Quizlet then replies, sure, what is the basic unit of structure and function in living things? And the student responds, a cell. And it responds, that's correct, great job. Can you give me an example of an organelle? So I'm sure you can only imagine the potential here. Um, this is essentially a personal tutor for you. Uh, you no longer have to book sessions with a tutor or I guess even pay for a tutor. You can just get on Quizlet and have your own personal tutor that is, I guess, a professional in just about any subject out there. This next use case is Instacart. If you haven't heard of Instacart before, it's basically just a grocery delivery app. And it looks like they're using ChatGPT to help people discover um, new recipes and specific meals. Uh, this example is using a healthy lunch for my kids. And now Instacart can recommend exactly you know, what might be a healthy meal for your kids and make it that much easier to add those things to your cart. So this is actually really cool. This could be a great opportunity for uh, people to start eating healthier. So that is a pretty positive use case right there. This next use case is with Shopify. We all have heard of Shopify before. And what Shopify is using ChatGPT for is for a new shopping assistant. When shoppers search for products, the shopping assistant makes personalized recommendations based on their request. Shop's new AI-powered shopping assistant will streamline in-app shopping by scanning millions of products to quickly find what buyers are looking for or help them discover something new. So I'm sure you can imagine how this can really help people 
um, discover new products and, ult- and ultimately make more purchases and lead to higher revenue for Shopify. So in this example, Shopify says, hi, I'm your shopping assistant. How can I help you? Customer responds, help me find a warm hoodie. Sure thing. Are you looking for a men's or women's hoodie? Men's. I found a new option for you. The men's warm training hoodie is a great choice for working out in colder weather. So now you can see that it has become that much easier to find the best product for you, the perfect product, and that much easier to make a purchase. So I'm sure we will be seeing this implemented in Amazon really soon. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the API itself. And it's my goal with this part of the video to help you understand what an API is at a high level, uh, just to kind of give you a foundational understanding of what all this means and how businesses and applications can actually use it. So um, I guess this part of the video is geared towards people who don't know how to code and who have never heard of an API before. I just wanna give you all a foundational understanding. Um, That way you can maybe have a conversation about it. Maybe you have a startup idea and this will at least help you understand what all this means. And if you don't want to learn how to code, you can always hire a developer, but but at least you'll know what the chat GPT API even does. So what an API stands for is an application programming interface. And what exactly that means is it's essentially a way for two or more computer programs to communicate with each other. And it's actually really simple. What it is really is, I mean, you've all heard of a URL before, a domain like this one right here, uh, chat.openai.com, um, you know, other URLs, facebook.com, um, google.com, they're all URLs and domains. And those same sorts of URLs are used on the back end of the website to uh, send messages and to send text back and forth between the actual website and the server. So for example, right here, I'm on ChatGPT. This is the uh, user interface. And I'm just gonna go and type in a simple input into the website. I'm just gonna say, what is an API? So I'm gonna leave that there for just a second. Then I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side of the screen. This is the actual ChatGPT API documentation. This is what the code looks like on the back end. And, um, you know, I'm not, you're going to try to explain all of this and you don't even need to understand it all. Again, I just want to create that foundational understanding. So you, you know, what an API is whenever you hear it tossed around and you hear people talking about it, you'll now know exactly what all this means. So this is the back end code. So whenever you use a website, there's code operating on the back end of the website. And when an API call is made, for example, when I press enter, on this um, input form right here uh, to make, you know, to send that message to chat GPT, essentially on the back end side in the code, a URL is being called. So this is an example of what that URL or API will look like in the code on the back end. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter on this form with chat GPT. So as soon as I pressed enter, this URL or one like it was called on the back end. And with that, uh, there was also a message that was sent with that URL that was called in the back end code. It went to the open AI server and the open AI server, you know, did its, it did, did its calculations and its computing and it came up with the response and then it sent a similar message um, back to the website here, back to my actual computer. And then it populated the web page right here with the response. So I hope that made a little bit of sense. I hope I didn't butcher that, but that's essentially how an API works. And let's just say that this right here is, uh, let's just say it's 250 words. That's just a complete guess. But um, based on the pricing of the chat GPT API, that would mean that this right here cost less than a tenth of a cent. So I hope that just kind of gives you an idea of how cheap this has become and how easy it is to implement this into any website or any application. And again, um, I, 
I just hope that serves as a foundational understanding. If you really wanted to get into this, there's tons of resources online on how you can actually learn how to code. Uh, you can always hire a developer as well. If y'all want me to actually make a tutorial about how to use the API, um, I think that'd be a, f a fun video. Um, but yeah, that right there should just give you a foundational understanding. If you wanted to uh, maybe have an idea for a specific sort of chat bot or some kind of a tutoring website or anything like that, if you have that startup idea, um, this is essentially how the API works. All right, let's go and wrap up the video with a few startup ideas on how you can actually implement this ChatGPT API to create a valuable startup. And here's an article that I found on medium.com by Elaine Younes. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but you have a great article here. So um, yeah, he has some great startup ideas on how you can use the ChatGPT API. This first one right here is an online tutoring or education platform. That would be pretty similar to Quizlet. However, I think if you really um, niche down with a specific subject that is underserved, um, you could really create a pretty great platform that serves a very um, specific and niche um, customer base that is looking to learn a, a very specific subject that is underserved with content online currently. And this second idea is a customer service or support platform. We all know that the customer service industry is ripe to be revolutionized. We all hate sitting on the phone and waiting for customer service and customer support. So whoever revolutionizes that business and that industry is really going to make a huge profit right there. Uh, this third one is a virtual personal assistant. And number four is online therapy or counseling platform. That one is no doubt going to be revolutionized very soon. We all know that mental health is a huge crisis right now, at least in America. And counseling and therapy is pretty expensive for a lot of people. And a very and having a platform that can help people through a crisis or just to help them um, think through their thoughts and get to a better mental state, that's going to be an incredibly valuable business. Number five, social networking platform. Number six, event planning and management platform. That could definitely be useful. And number seven, an online marketplace. So there are just a few startup and business ideas right there. Um, if y'all have any questions about any of this, about the ChatGPT API or anything like that, feel free to put it in the comments. I'm happy to help out. If you got any value out of the video, go ahead and like it. I definitely appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see y'all next time.